Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our worship this morning. Welcome to everybody joining us online this morning. We're glad you're with us. A couple of announcements. Coming up is our Grill and Games community picnic. Um, that is August 24th from noon to 3. If you look in the back of the church, sitting right next to the bulletins, you'll find some posters. We would love it if you would take some of these posters home and hang them up around town. Uh, you know, all the businesses around town be happy to probably hang them up for us. So please grab a poster if you frequent a business that would be happy to hang it up for us and take it in and hang it up there. That's from noon to three on August 24th. We also ask that you invite a family uh, member or a friend to come to that as well. And we are going to have a picnic uh, hot dogs and um, some uh, yard games and board games. So if you do have yard games or board games uh, sorts of things that you would like to bring, let me know so I can kind of start getting a list of what we've got available for those. Um, let me know what you've got. And if you would be someone who would be willing or interested in being the grill master, let me know that too. Um, we're probably just doing hot dogs and hamburgers, so pretty easy if you'd like to uh, spend your time getting overheated in front of a girl for the afternoon. Um, let me know about that. If you would be interested in donating hot dogs, hamburgers, ketchup, pickle relish, buns, um, or soda, let me know that, or chips, let me know that as well. Um, and we'll just uh, get ourselves together for a lovely family picnic with our community. So that's, uh, like I say, these posters are in the back. I can make more, so if we run out, uh, just let me know, we'll make some more. Are there other announcements for the gathering? Yes. Yes, if you can stay after church and move a few tables for Donnie's funeral dinner, we would appreciate the help, because um, the ladies are gonna get that all set this week, but obviously moving tables requires a few extra hands. Anything else? Uh, Barb, Barbara, is 21 again. Um, so it's her birthday, so we're going to uh, sing her happy birthday quick. Any other announcements this morning? <laughs> then our worship service begins with our call to worship. I invite you to rise as you are able. We call upon you, Holy One, you who are near to us. We testify to your power to make your kingdom known among creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. We speak of the glory of your miraculous acts, your abiding presence, and your abundant love. All your works shall give thanks to you, Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. With justice and grace, with hope and mercy, with abundance and discernment, you sustain those in need. You uphold those who have been broken, and you satisfy those who seek a better way. All your works shall give thanks to you, Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. You may be seated. We pray together. Great and mighty God, we seek your presence among us. We strain to hear your voice as it so often gets drowned out by the noise of the world. 
we pause to consider your works, your word, and your way. Speak to us now in spirit and in truth. Open your hand and our hearts that we may join in this moment of holy encounter. Forge us as a community committed to follow the path Jesus has marked for us. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 383, Come, Let Us Join with Faithful Soul. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us take a moment and share God's peace with one another. Good morning, morning, everybody. God's peace be with everybody here today. God's peace be with everybody joining us online or watching the recording later in the week. At this time, we're going to collect up our prayers for later on in the worship service. If you are watching the recording, you can uh, type your prayers into the chat or the comments. Um, If I get it in time for worship today, we will include them today. If I get it later in the week, I'll pray for folks at the end of the week. If you're here in the sanctuary, who are we praying for this day? For Nicole. for Steve and for Ashley. For Jean. And Garland for safety on his trip. And for Gwen and Jean. All right. We'll pray for those folks, as well as any names that come in online, just a little bit later on in our worship service. Creator God, we confess that we fail to recognize the bounty around us. We are not satisfied. We never have enough. We consider what we have received and what we have generated and label it as too little rather than sufficient. We need to cultivate our imagination and our faith to observe abundance and opportunity rather than scarcity and deficiency. Help us to comprehend that in your kingdom, the fragments you gather are more than enough for flourishing. We take a moment now for silent confession reflection, and prayer.
Beloved, we are enough. God's grace, strength, love, and hope meets us with sufficiency. Through the Holy One's sustaining power, we can gather the fragments that make our lives beautiful and God's kingdom real in the world. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today comes from 2 Kings chapter 4. And as we read this story, I suspect it's going to sound very familiar to you, but you're going to say, wait a minute, that's not the right person doing that, and it's not in the right place in the Bible. Well, that's because we've heard this story over and over and over again when Jesus uh, does this miracle, and in fact, we're going to hear that later today. Um, but the miracle that Jesus does of feeding the many, many people with a very small amount of food is also a miracle that happens in the Old Testament when Elijah is given a small amount of food to feed a large number of people. And so we see in the Old Testament the prophet Elijah, who is considered one of the greatest prophets, uh, doing this same miracle. Then we're going to read the story of Jesus doing the miracle in, um, from the Gospel of John. So as I read this and you listen to it, you're going to say, wait a minute, that story sounds very familiar. But actually, this story is where it happens first, the first time it happens. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God. Twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. He set it before them. They ate and they had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Our second reading for today comes from Psalm number 145. We're going to be reading a portion of this psalm, verses 10 through 18. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Here ends the psalm. Our next hymn is number 503, Savior, Let Me Walk With You.
Our gospel lesson comes from St. John, the sixth chapter, and it is one of the many places in uh, the gospels where we hear the story of Jesus feeding miracle. Uh, now, last week, remember, we read from the gospel of Mark, and we skipped a bunch in the middle, and I said, we'll come back to that. Well, we're coming back to that same story, only we're going to read it from the Gospel of John. So the bunch in the middle in the Gospel of Mark that we skipped last week is this same story, the feeding uh, miracle uh, of Jesus. So from chapter 6, we're going to start reading with, with the first verse. <clears throat> After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up. And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough with a strong wind blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near to the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> My sister-in-law put a little meme on Facebook this week, and it said, if God can make the butt of a bug light up, imagine what God can do for you. And it just tickled me, and it's been making me giggle all week, uh, that thought. So I want you to hang on to that thought. We're going to come back around to that today, um, to that little bit of silliness in the sermon. But before we get there, there's lots of other things to explain. So just hang on to that and, you know, spend your time if you're bored during the sermon wondering how I'm going to get back around to, you know, God's making a bug's butt light up. What was that? This is not a rebuttal. In fact, God can make a God's butt light or make a bug's butt light up. Our scripture today is... One of the key, well, it's really, we read two of the key miracles, but I'm going to focus on the one, the feeding miracle. One of the key miracles of Jesus that's told in 
the New Testament. And the way John tells this story is important because when St. John is telling this story, part of what he wants to get across to the people who are listening is that Jesus is God. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophets. Jesus is the I am, which we're going to hear in the next few weeks and over and over again we hear in the Gospel of John where Jesus says, I am the bread of life or I am the way, the truth, the way, whatever, but the I am is what's important. To understand why John's listeners would have heard these stories and understood that this meant that Jesus was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets and that Jesus was the I am, we have to go back and look at some of the Old Testament things. The first thing we're going to go back and look at is that story of Elisha feeding the hundred people with the 20 barley loaves. Elisha is one of the great prophets. Elisha fed a hundred people with 20 barley loaves, which is a miracle, but isn't nearly as impressive as what Jesus does in the New Testament, where he has five loaves and a couple of fish and 5,000 people. And so we see in the Old Testament the story of a miracle that a prophet did, and we see in the New Testament that same miracle multiplied by a thousand almost. And so we see in the New Testament this idea that Jesus is like the Old Testament prophets, he is similar to Elisha in that he does these same miracles, but in Jesus they are multiplied infinitely to be infinitely more powerful and more amazing than what even the old, great Old Testament prophets could do. Now you and I might not have picked up on that because we don't have the same fluency with the Old Testament. We haven't memorized all of those stories in the way that John's listeners would have. But the listeners, the first people who read the book of John, uh, the Gospel by St. John, would have known the Old Testament intimately. And in knowing it intimately, they would have picked up on that and said, oh, hey, this miracle Jesus did is exponentially greater than even the great miracles the Old Testament prophets did. And they would have picked up on that and thought, Jesus really is the fulfillment of all that the prophets promised. Now immediately before the story we read today, we read these words, where Jesus says to the people who are doubting him, if you believed in Moses, you would believe in me, for he wrote about me. Now there's a whole long uh, discourse on that. I'm not going to read the whole piece, but I am going to read just that verse to remind you that Moses is the representation of the law in the Old Testament. Moses is the person to whom God gave the law. Moses is the person who wrote it all down, and so you've got the representation of the prophets and the representation of the law. And so immediately before this story, we're told that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law of Moses. Again, to a people who knew the Old Testament intimately, they would have known that Moses was the one to whom God gave the law. And so if Moses writes about Jesus, if Moses uh, is... Uh, 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 if, if Jesus' works can be seen as a fulfillment of what Moses did, then Jesus is also a fulfillment of the law. And so Jesus is a fulfillment of both the law and the prophets of the Old Testament. 
which is important because shortly hereafter in the Gospel of John, we're going to hear the I am statements. The first being I am, or the first one we're going to hear is I am the bread of life. The word I am is important also because that's the name that God gives God's self in the Old Testament. So if you remember, again, going back to the story of Moses, when Moses is at the burning bush and he asks God, who shall I say sent me? God says, I am who I am. So God gives himself the name I am. It's the only time that God directly gives God's self a name. And so as we go through the Gospel of John, we're going to hear the I am statements where Jesus, the fulfillment of the law and the prophet, now says, I am. Jesus now says, I am, and those listeners who are intimately familiar with the Old Testament would hear the echo, the I am echo, that says Jesus is not just some other guy. Jesus is God. The fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of the prophets, and the one who is and was and ever will be, I am. Now, all that's fairly esoteric, and um, unless you happen to really enjoy Old Testament scholarship or New Testament scholarship, you might not care that much that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets and is the I am in our modern day. It's hard to connect those kind of thoughts and say, okay, what does this mean for me today, this week, as I go out into this world in this time? Well, that's where we come back around to the glowing bug's butt. If Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, if Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophets, if Jesus is the I am, and the Gospel of John clearly proclaims that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, the fulfillment of the prophets, Jesus is the I am, if all of those things are true, then Jesus can take care of anything that we might face. Jesus can take care of anything that we might need. Jesus can provide anything that is necessary to get through this world. And we see in the story that when the people come to him and they sit on the grass and they have no food, Jesus provides abundantly what they need. If God can make a bug's butt light up, what do you think God can do for you? The answer to that question is God can do for you everything that you need. And in Jesus Christ, we find God. And therefore, as Christians, knowing that Jesus Christ walks with us in this world, we can go out of these doors with courage to face the day ahead. We can go out of these doors knowing that God will provide sufficiently everything we need, and not even just sufficiently, but abundantly. As we read the story, Jesus doesn't just provide enough food for everybody. The leftovers that are collected are more than they started with to begin. And when you think of fireflies, I always think of God's abundance and God's delight in the creation of this world. Because there's really no need for a firefly's butt to light up. It's just pretty. And it's beautiful. And it's one of those little details about life that remind me that God does not just provide the very basics we need, but God provides the beauty and the joy and the abundance of this world. So indeed, if God can make a but bug's butt light up, God can do for us anything and even more than we need. Amen.
Our next hymn is number 352, O oh God, accept my heart this day. We pray now. God of abundance, we thank you for providing us with everything we need and with even more than we could possibly dream. We ask, Lord, that you continue to be with us and to be with all in this world. Guide and help us as we reach out to provide for the needs of others in your name. We pray this day for those who need your particular presence and your everlasting love in their lives in a special way right now. We ask for your blessing to be with Nicole, Steve, Ashley, Jean, Gwen and Jean, Tammy and her husband Paul, Robbie and Stanley, bringing healing, bringing health, and bringing wholeness. We pray for traveling mercies for Garland, that you might bring him safely to his destination and safely back home. And we pray for our congregation, Lord, that you would strengthen us in faith in you and in love for one another. All of this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Generosity encourages us to consider what we have to share beyond our own use. May we exhibit the generosity of the young person found in the gospel narrative that shared their lunch when Philip surveyed the crowd of thousands. The miracle starts with that act of sharing and faith. Today we give a portion of our time and our talents in our offering 
And as we collect our offering, we also dedicate it back to God's work. Today, our offering plate is at the back of the sanctuary. You can place offerings in as you leave. And if you're joining us online and would like to support the ministry of this congregation, you can do so by mailing offerings to 887 Bennell Avenue, Red Granite, Wisconsin, 54970. Let us pray. Sustaining God, receive our offerings and magnify them beyond our imagination for the benefit of your kingdom this ministry, and your creation. Cultivate a heart of generosity within us and enable us to witness the abundance that can be found in the fragments that remain as testimony to your power at work in us. Amen. Our final hymn is typically a communion hymn. We're not having communion today, but uh, given that its uh, refrain is loaves abound, I thought it would be a good hymn to end on. Number 347, let us talents and tongues employ. Please rise as you are able for our closing blessing. May we, according to the riches of God's glory, the presence of Christ and the power of the Spirit, be strengthened in our inner being, be rooted and grounded in love, and be filled with the fullness of God to the Holy One who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen.